In this video, we will be evaluating trig functions such as these without the use of a calculator, and we will be using sum and difference identities to do it. That means that in addition to these facts, which you need to have memorized, we will also be assuming that you have memorized these new identities. Now at this point, I am more comfortable working in radians. So um, when I'm given degrees, I'm just going to convert over to radians real quick. Uh, I find it to be worth the extra step. The way you convert from degrees into radians, uh, if I have 165 degrees, what you want to do is multiply by pi over 180 degrees. So in other words, I'm really doing 165 divided by 180 and I'm just sort of putting the pi up there with it. So it's just a matter of reducing this. Uh, if I were to divide each of these by 5, that's going to give me 33, 33 pi over 36. <clears throat> now these are obviously <coughs> divisible by 3. So if I divide each of these by 3, then I wind up with 11 pi over 12. So now I've just converted this over to radians. <clears throat> so this is the same thing as the sine of 11 pi over 12. Okay, great. Now what? 11 pi over 12 is not one of my special angles. I'm talking about pi over 4, pi over 6, or pi over 3. Uh, so, I would like to split this up into two angles that involve special angles. So, um, one strategy to use is subtraction. If I take 11 pi over 12 and subtract one of my special angles, uh, I'm going to subtract pi over 4. Let's see what we get. In order to subtract these, I would need like denominators. So I would end up multiplying these by 3. That makes uh, both of these are, are now 12. So let's see. So that's 11 pi over 12 minus 3 pi over 12. Uh, that's 8 pi over 12. Now, uh, 8 pi over 12 <coughs> reduces down to, let's see, 2 pi over 3. So I've got 11 pi over 12 minus pi over 4 is equal to 2 pi over 3. Adding pi over 4 to both sides, that gives me 11 pi over 12 is equal to pi over 4 plus 2 pi over 3. Notice that both of these are special angles. I've got uh, pi over 4 and here I've got 2 pi over 3, reference angle pi over 3. So that's how I'm going to split this up. So I'm going to rewrite this problem as the sine of pi over 4 plus 2 pi over 3. Now I'm going to use this top identity to do the problem. So you need to have memorized this identity. Okay, so if I have the sine of the sum of two angles, I can evaluate it this way. So this would be the same thing as the sine of pi over 4 times the cosine of 2 pi over 3 plus the cosine of pi over 4 times the sine of 2 pi over 3. That's just what the formula tells us. Notice that the order of the angles, uh, I'm keeping that the same. I have pi over 4 and 2 pi over 3. So notice how it goes, pi over 4 and 2 pi over 3, pi over 4 and 2 pi over 3. Anyway, all of these things can be evaluated separately. So the sine of pi over 4, that's something that we have memorized. Uh, that is 1 over radical 2. Um, the cosine of 2 pi over 3, 
Well, uh, we know what the cosine of pi over 3 is. Okay, the cosine of pi over 3 is 1 half. So what about 2 pi over 3? Well, we know that the cosine of 2 pi over 3, it would be in this quadrant. Okay, here's 2 pi over 3 right here. Um, so that's going to, instead of being 1 half, that's going to be negative 1 half <coughs> because it's in the second quadrant. So the cosine of 2 pi over 3 will be negative 1 half. Uh, the cosine of pi over 4, again, that's something that we've memorized. That's 1 over radical 2. And now how about the sine of 2 pi over 3? Um, well, the sine of pi over 3 is radical 3 over 2, okay, the reference angle. Um, 2 pi over 3, uh, the sine of that will also be radical 3 over 2. Um, because the sine is a y value, it's positive in the second quadrant. So this will be radical 3 over 2. All right, so we can evaluate each of these things. So all we have to do is really simplify this. Um, so this is going to be negative, all right, because a positive times a negative is a negative. 1 times 1 is 1. Radical 2 times 2, I'm just going to write 2 radical 2. Okay, similarly here, 1 times radical 3 is radical 3, and radical 2 times 2, I'm just going to put 2 radical 2. I'm going to go ahead and look at this negative sign as being on the 1. Just going to move that on up to the 1. Um, so now I have like denominators. So when I add these, of course, I will keep my like denominator. And then I'm just adding these. So I have... Um, negative 1 plus radical 3. So this is one form of the answer. Um, now, if you wanted to rationalize the denominator, um, here's how that would look. If you uh, rationalize the denominator, that would mean multiplying the numerator and denominator by radical 2. So I'm going to wind up multiplying everything by radical 2. So in the denominator here, um, radical 2 times radical 2 is just 2. 2 times 2 is 4, so that's going to give me 4. Um, now, radical 2 times negative 1 is just negative radical 2. And radical 2 times radical 3 is radical 6. All right, so this would be another form of the answer where the denominator has been rationalized. That just means there are no radicals in the denominator. And that's it for problem number one. Now, problem number two is already in radians, so that's great. Um, so, to figure out how to split this up into special angles, I'm going to use my subtraction strategy. So, uh, if I take 5 pi over 12, and for example, I subtract pi over 4, I will be very interested to see what I will get. Um, again, to make a denominator of 12, I would need to multiply by 3. Okay, so 5 pi over 12 minus 3 pi over 12 would be 2 pi over 12 which means that 5 pi over 12 minus pi over 4 equals pi over 6 because this reduces down to pi over 6. Now, adding pi over 4 to both sides, in other words, I'm moving this over to the other side, then I will have 5 pi over 12 equals pi over 4 plus pi over 6. Okay, so this is how I will split it up. So that means what I have here is the cosine of pi over 4 plus pi over 6. Boom! So let's see, let's take a look at those identities. So remember, if you have the cosine of something plus something, uh, this is how you do it. I'm just going to use this formula. 
Okay, so that's going to go like this. Um, cosine pi over 4, cosine pi over 6, minus, right, because the sine changes, and now we'll have sine pi over 4, sine uh, pi over 6. All right, I think I'm just going to erase this green stuff. Done with it. Okay, so we have this. Um, each of these are things that we can evaluate individually. Cosine of pi over 4, we have memorized that that is 1 over radical 2. Cosine of pi over 6, we know that that is uh, radical 3 over 2. Okay, these are facts from the chart that we have memorized. All right, similarly, the sine of pi over 4 we have memorized is 1 over radical 2. And the sine of pi over 6 we know to be 1 half. So if we just simplify this expression down, 1 times radical 3 is radical 3. Radical 2 times 2, I'm just going to write 2 radical 2. 1 times 1 is 1. Radical 2 times 2 is 2 radical 2. I have like denominators here, so that's going to make radical 3 minus 1 over 2 radical 2. So this is one form of the answer right now. Um, you could also rationalize the denominator by multiplying everything uh, by radical 2. Okay, if I do that, then in the denominator I'm going to get 4 again because this is uh, radical 2 times radical 2 is 2, 2 times 2 is 4. Um, radical 2 times radical 3 is radical 6, and of course 1 times radical 2 is radical 2. So this is another form of the answer where we have rationalized the denominator. All right, looking at problem number three, once again, I am going to use the subtraction method. So I'm going to take uh, pi over 12, and I'm going to subtract pi over 4, and I'm going to see what happens. To make like denominators, I would have to multiply by 3. Um, so 1 pi over 12 minus 3 pi over 12 is negative 2 pi over 12. Interesting. Well, of course, this reduces to negative pi over 6. So now I have pi over 12 minus pi over 4 is equal to uh, negative pi over 6. Adding pi over 4 to both sides, in other words, moving pi over 4 to the other side, I'm going to have pi over 12 equals pi over 4 minus pi over 6. So this is how I will split it up. So that means that sine of pi over 12 is the same thing as the sine of pi over 4 minus pi over 6. Now I'm about to use the second identity for the sign of something minus something. So watch it happen. All right, so I can rewrite this as the sine of pi over 4 cosine pi over 6 minus the cosine of pi over 4 times the sine of pi over 6. And now we can just replace each one of these expressions with its value. So sine of pi over 4, we know to be 1 over radical 2. We've memorized that. Cosine of pi over 6 is radical 3 over 2. Cosine of pi over 4 is 1 over radical 2. And sine of pi over 6 is 1 half. Um, multiplying these together, uh, 1 times radical 3 is radical 3. Uh, radical 2 times 2 is 2 radical 2. Uh, 
1 times 1 is 1, radical 2 times 2 is 2 radical 2. We have like denominators, so that gives us radical 3 uh, minus 1 over 2 radical 2. So this is one form of the answer right now. Now we could rationalize the denominator and get another form of the answer by multiplying the numerator and denominator by radical 2. Uh, when we multiply the numerator by radical 2, we will have to do the distributive property like this. So this is going to give us a new denominator of 4. And uh, radical 3 times radical 2 is radical 6. And 1 times radical 2 is radical 2. So this is the other form of the answer where we have rationalized the denominator. All right, looking at number 4, I'm going to interpret this. I'm sure it's supposed to be the cosine of negative 15 degrees. Um, I would like this to be in radians, so I'm going to take this negative 15 degrees and I'm going to multiply uh, by pi over 180 in order to convert this to radians. So I just need to reduce this down. Um, both of these are divisible by 5, so I'm going to do that real quick. All right, just divide by 5. Um, but that's going to give me negative 3 pi over 36. And uh, now both of these are divisible by 3. So if I do that, that's going to give me negative uh, pi over 12. All right, so that's phase 1, that this is the same thing as the cosine of negative pi over 12. Okay, great. Now, I need to split this up into two angles that are special angles that I can deal with. Um, so again, I'm going to use the uh, subtraction method and see how it works for me. So I'm going to take this um, negative pi over 12 and I'm going to try um, let's see what happens if I subtract pi over 4 like I've been doing on all the other problems. Alright, I'm, tempt I'm tempted to add pi over 4 because this is uh, already negative, but I'm curious what will happen if I just subtract like I've been doing. So um, again, to make the denominator of 12, I'd have to multiply by 3. So this is going to give me negative 1 pi minus 3 pi um, is going to give me negative 4 pi over 12, which of course reduces down to negative pi over 3. Okay, so what I have is negative pi over 12 um, minus pi over 4 is equal to negative pi over 3. So adding pi over 4 to both sides, moving it over to the other side, that's going to give me negative pi over 12 um, is equal to pi over 4 minus pi over 3. Okay, that is great. I can work with this very nicely. So uh, this would be the same thing as the cosine of pi over 4 minus pi over 3. Alright, so I can do the rest of the problem from here. So it looks like I'll be using this bottom formula right here. Check it out. Okay, so here we go. Um, so this can be written as cosine pi over 4 cosine pi over 3 plus, notice the sign change, sine pi over 4, sine pi over 3. Okay, cosine pi over 4. I do not like it when it does that. Let me try that again. Cosine pi over 4 is the same thing as 1 over radical 2. 
cosine of pi over 3 is 1 half. Sine of pi over 4 is 1 over radical 2. Sine of pi over 3 is radical 3 over 2. All right, those are all facts that we've memorized. Multiplying these, I get 1 over 2 root 2. Multiplying these, I get radical 3 over 2 root 2. Considering that I have like denominators, I have 1 plus radical 3 over 2 root 2. So this is one form of the answer. Um, or I could rationalize the denominator by multiplying everything by radical 2, the numerator and the denominator by radical 2. Okay, in the denominator, I'm going to get 4 and distributing this radical 2. Radical 2 times 1 is radical 2. Radical 2 times radical 3 uh, is radical 6. So this is the other form of the answer where we have rationalized the denominator. For number 5, once again, we are given degrees. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to convert 105 degrees into radians. And I'm going to do that by multiplying by pi over 180. So basically, I just need to reduce this, this and I will have radians. So if I divide each of these by 5, because that's the obvious thing, um, let's see, 105 divided by 5, that's going to be 21. So I've got 21 pi. 180 divided by 5 is 36. Now both of these are divisible by 3. So I'm going to go ahead and divide by 3. So that's going to give me 7 pi uh, over 12. OK, great. So that's phase 1 complete. This is the same thing as the sine of 7 pi over 12. So now I, ha I safely have converted to radians. I'm much more comfortable with radians. So now I'm going to split this apart into uh, special angles that I recognize. And I will once again try using my subtraction method, which has worked very well for me so far. So if I have um, 7 pi over 12, I'm going to try subtracting pi over 4. And I'm just going to see what happens. To make like denominators, I would have to multiply the numerator and denominator by 3. So 7 pi over 12 minus 3 pi over 12 is 4 pi over 12, um, which reduces to pi over 3. So that means 7 pi over 12 minus pi over 4 is equal to pi over 3. Now adding pi over 4 to both sides, that means 7 pi over 12 is equal to pi over 4 plus pi over 3. All right, so this is what I'm going to use to split apart 7 pi over 12. So that means that this is the same thing as the sine of pi over 4 uh, plus pi over 3. So I'm about to use this top identity right here. OK, so I can rewrite this as the sine of pi over 4, cosine pi over 3, plus cosine pi over 4, sine pi over 3. Okay, so sine of pi over 4 is 1 over radical 2. Cosine of pi over 3 is 1 half. Cosine pi over 4 is 1 over radical 2. And sine pi over 3 is radical 3 
over 2. These are all facts that we have memorized. Multiplying these, I get 1 over 2 radical 2. Multiplying these, I get radical 3 over 2 radical 2. Recognizing that I have like denominators, I have 1 plus radical 3 over 2 radical 2. So this gives us one form of the answer right now. Now we can rationalize the denominator by multiplying the numerator and denominator by radical 2. Okay, that's going to create a denominator of 4 right here. And distributing, radical 2 times 1 is radical 2. And radical 2 times radical 3 is radical 6. So that is going to be the answer if you rationalize the denominator. Okay, here comes the last problem. And again, I'm going to interpret this as the cosine of negative 7 pi over 12. They were kind enough to give me radians, which I love. So all I need to do is figure out how to split this apart into special angles. Uh, I am going to try the subtraction method one more time. It has worked for me over and over again. So of course I'm going to try it again. So uh, I'm going to take my original angle and I'm going to try subtracting pi over 4 from it. And let's see what we get this time. Uh, to make like denominators, I would have to uh, multiply the numerator and denominator by 3. So negative 7 pi over 12 minus 3 pi over 12 is going to give me negative 10 pi over 12. Interesting. So that means that negative 7 pi over 12 minus pi over 4 is equal to, um, now I'm just reducing here, dividing both of these by 2, that's going to be negative 5 pi over 6. Interesting. Now, adding pi over 4 to both sides, and thereby moving the pi over 4 over to the right-hand side, gives me negative 7 pi over 12 is equal to pi over 4 minus 5 pi uh, over 6. And this is what I'm going to use to separate this into two angles. Okay, so this expression would be the same thing as the cosine of pi over 4 minus 5 pi over 6. All right, it'd be the same thing as that. And once again, I'm going to use this bottom identity right here for the cosine of something minus something. So this would be the same thing as having the cosine of pi over 4 uh, cosine 5 pi over 6 plus, all right, notice the sign change, sine pi over 4 sine 5 pi over 6 okay here we go um, cosine of pi over 4 we know that cosine of pi over 4 is 1 over radical 2 we have memorized that now what about cosine of 5 pi over 6 uh, well ignore the 5 for a second the cosine of pi over 6 is radical 3 over 2 alright pi over 6 is the reference angle so that means that cosine of 5 pi over 6 is either going to be radical 3 over 2 or negative radical 3 over 2 alright it's going to be one of these um, so which is it and uh, it just depends on the quadrant that's all um, so let's look at a little picture my friend okay so here are I'm gonna draw some pi over sixes real quick 
Okay, here are my five, my pi over sixes. Um, now, five pi over six is right here. Okay, in the second quadrant. Um, so, in this quadrant, cosine is negative because cosine is an x value, and x values are negative over here to the left. So that's why I'm going to go ahead and say negative radical three over two. All right, let's keep going. Sine of pi over four, we know to be one over radical two. Um, what about sine of five pi over six? Well, forget the five for a second. The sine of pi over six, the reference angle, is one half. Okay, so the sine of five pi over six is either going to be plus or minus one half. It's going to be one of those, not both. Um, so again, 5 pi over 6 is right here in the second quadrant. Is sine positive or negative here? Well, sine is a y value, so it will be positive in the second quadrant. It's up above the x-axis. So that's why I'm just going to go with positive 1 half. Okay, so hard part's over. So multiplying these together, I'm going to get um, negative radical 3 over 2 root 2. Notice, um, look, a positive times a negative is a negative. Um, but instead of putting the negative sort of in the middle, I went ahead and put it at the numerator because I know I'm going to combine, um, you know, I'm going to combine these fractions in a moment using like denominators. So I'm looking ahead, being smart. Multiplying these together, I'm going to have 1 over 2 root 2. And like I said, because I've put the negative up on the radical 3, it makes it just a little bit easier to combine these. So now I can just say, okay, this will be 2 root 2, like denominators. And here's my um, negative root 3 plus 1. So this is one form of the answer. Okay, or I can rationalize the denominator by multiplying the numerator and denominator by radical 2. Uh, so that will give me a denominator of 4. And distributing here, I will get um, negative radical 6, because root 2 times root 3 is root 6. And then plus root 2, because root 2 times 1 is root 2. So this is the other form of the answer uh, that you get if you rationalize the denominator. That's going to do it for this video guys. I hope it was helpful and I look forward to seeing you on the next video.